brewing of beer brewing is the name of the process and one of the processes of brewing is making of beer which is an alcoholic beverage so in short we can call brewing is the production of malt beverages beverages means different types of the liquids which are fit for human consumption and which is prepared from malt brewing it is different from conventional fermentation processes the other industrial fermentation processes there are several differences because uh, this brewing process making of beer it is a specialized type of process in which different specialized steps are involved which are required for the production of flavor aroma bringing the clarity the color bringing the foam production foam stability and the presence of alcohol that is ethanol in desirable concentration along with its safety so all these factors make this process special process so beer it can be called by different terminologies in different regions examples of malt beverages fermented malt beverages are beer ale porter stout so in general all these are the results of brewing process now the composition of beer the composition of beer is dependent on the type and the variety of starting raw material used so it is dependent on the variety of barley grains which is used and also the processes like malting and kilning process so that decides the characteristic of beer in general the composition of beer is it contains carbohydrate proteins or peptides important constituents are hop substances hops are responsible for the contribution of an essential component of beer which is responsible for giving the flavor to beer are resins essential oils and tannic acids it contains the major concentration of ethanol and of course dissolved carbon dioxide along with the presence of other substances organic substances in very less concentration like glycerol and acetic acid and of course the finished beer it contains the major component that is water up to 92% by volume there are different types of beers so in general the ph of the beer it ranges from 4 to 4.3 that means it is an acidic drink and the alcohol percent is generally uh, 4% however nowadays we know that up to 15% the concentration of ethanol can be found in different types of beers it contains approximately 1 gram percent of sugar uh, which is left behind like maltose 0.3 percent of protein 2.27 volume of carbon dioxide so you can see the high concentration of co2 and alcohol here are few examples of beer ledger beer ledgering ledgering means storage so storage in cold age in cold and this is produced with the help of a bottom fermenting yeast second is pilsner pilsner is light bodied beer with light color with low alcohol concentration up to 3.8% bock beer it is brewed in winter for sell in easter tune so this is this terminology or nomenclature system is also based on 
the region in which this beer is produced it is uh, the peculiar characteristic of this beer is it is dark color due to the presence of caramelized or roasted malt high concentration of caramelized malt in beer it has sweet taste due to presence of residual sugar and it is heavy body one more example is l l is characterized by the presence of very high concentration of hops so it is responsible for giving a very heavy flavor to beer another examples are stout and porter stout means strong and porter these two are dark colored heavy bodied high alcohol contained beverages now the medium components which are important for the brewing process the production medium it should contain carbon and nitrogen substrates vitamins and growth factors which are required for the growth and fermentation by yeast it also contributes compounds responsible for development of aroma flavor foam characteristic which is very important color clarity stability and that gives the stability to the finished product so the yeast which are generally used in the brewing process are saccharomyces cerevisiae saccharomyces calsvergensis saccharomyces ellipsoides so most of these saccharomyces the peculiar characteristic is that they cannot utilize starch as a source of carbon and therefore starchy materials cannot be directly used as a brewing material as a component of medium and therefore this starch has to be hydrolyzed into fermentable sugars like glucose maltose so therefore it has to be degraded to maltose and glucose by the action of amylases interesting thing is that these amylases are present in malt itself these amylases are present in barley itself which are responsible for degradation of starch and these fermentable sugars are then utilized by yeast they can be converted to alcohol and co2 so these amylases will be responsible for formation of dextrins also which are the short chains of glucose along with maltose and glucose remember that dextrins are not metabolized by yeast only maltose and glucose is degraded nitrogen source so nitrogen source is provided by the presence of malt proteins and these proteins are in general are not utilized by yeast and therefore these proteins complex proteins should be degraded into fermentable proteins or the proteins or peptides that will be utilized by yeast so in this case like malt amylases are responsible for converting starch into fermentable sugars malt proteases are also responsible for degradation of proteins into peptides which is then utilized by yeast as a source of nitrogen presence of peptones and peptides is very important in beer as it is responsible for contributing the flavor and the most important is it is responsible for the development of foam characteristics peptides are responsible for formation of foam to the finished product so therefore this partial degradation of carbon and nitrogenous substrate like starch and proteins so it is very important and it is done through malt amylases and malt proteases sometimes in case of preparation of the production medium that is malt mash there may be addition of malt adjuncts 
that means it is the additional amount of starch which is added so it is dependent on the variety of malt which is used so if the variety of malt is not contributing large amount of or sufficient amount of starch then additional starch it can be added in the form of addition of germinated rice or wheat so that is called as malt adjuncts additional starch is contributed by malt adjuncts the important components minerals will study them one by one first one is malt malt is the infusion of grains barley grains that have undergone sprouting this process is called as malting in other words barley grains are allowed to germinate and they get converted into a sprouted form and that is called as malt so malt is the raw material for the brewing process <coughs> barley are allowed to prepare there is a process that process is called as malting and these barley grains after the process of malting it gets converted into malt and that malt is then used for the making of beer so malting process is also very important preparation of malt there is a separate industry which looks after the production of malt only and then that malt is transported to beer making industry so this malting process is divided into five main steps cleaning and grading of barley so these barley which is a closer variety of wheat this is grown in several parts of india it is very close to wheat but it is a uh, different strain from wheat so it appears like this just similar to wheat and having a larger length as compared to wheat variety you can see it appears like this and there is a this is a very simple comparison you can see the barley here and wheat here so shorter variety as compared to wheat so in this first step this uh, barley grains are cleaned so there is removal of foreign objects sand and dust by sieving process sieving means salni so there will be grading of barley grains and only large size barley grains are selected medium and small size barley grains are uh, not discarded they are used as animal feed second step is steeping steeping means incubation in water so these barley grains are then transferred to cold water at 12 to 15 degrees celsius in trays and it is steeping is done for 2 to 3 days so steeping involves dipping these barley grains in water and every time this water is changed after 10 to 12 hours so whatever the dissolved oxygen is there that dissolved oxygen from water is utilized for the activation of these barley grains and there will be activation of metabolism so along with continuous aeration it activates the barley grain so the metabolism rate of metabolism it increases and that leads to increase in the rate of respiration so whatever the excess water is there it is drained later on the next step is germination so the water is removed and desirable moisture contained is retained in barley grains and these barley grains are then incubated for 4 to 6 days along in presence of 45% of moisture so 
still there is formation of rootless so rootlet formation is the indicator that the process of germination has to be stopped so here the objective is to objective of germination is to get high concentration of starch in barley grain so formation of rootlet it indicates that whatever the starch which is stored in barley grain is now being utilized we want to stop this process here because we don't want to lose starch so formation uh, so this is accompanied by formation of amylases alpha amylases and beta amylases which are synthesized during germination along with that there is formation of proteolytic enzymes also all these enzymes are very important as we have discussed in earlier slide so this germination process after germination process the next step is kilning process we can call it as roasting process so this process is very important in order to stop the metabolism of these barley grains means enzymes are temporarily the enzymatic reaction should be inhibited in order to avoid the further degradation of starch so kilning process these barley grains are exposed to high temperature to stop all biological activities and germination without harming the desirable enzyme so although these higher temperatures may be employed at this point to obtain dark colored caramelized malt so if the manufacturer has decided to produce a dark colored beer then these barley grains are exposed to more period of time so that some of these it will get more and more roasted in order to form the dark color beer so it will be because of the caramelization or the burning of sugar so which is desirable for formation of dark color beer generally the drying process it involves heating below 50 degree celsius this is now called as young malt or green malt this green malt is a dried product which can be stored and this is further if there are presence of some culms or rootlets they can be removed and this is how this malt contributes the important components like amylases proteases starch protein additional yeast nutrients different types of growth factors and flavor characteristics so this malt contributes all these compounds to the production medium so this malt will be the product of malting industry and then this malt will go to the brewing industry in which actual production of beer or fermentation will takes place sometimes there may be requirement of additional starch material which is provided or which is called as malt adjuncts so sometimes this additional starch is provided by means of addition of additional amount of rice and corn addition of malt adjuncts may be required may not be required it is dependent on the variety of barley third very important component of the production medium is hops hop it is a name of a plant it is a climbing plant it is a vein it is called as humulus lupulus this should be written in italics it is a climbing plant it bears two flowers staminate flower and pistillate flower so this pistillate flower it has breathing value that means it is important for breathing process it is a cone like structure having cone like appearance having breathing value so we can call it as hop hops 
are the female uh, sorry dried female flowers of hop plant so it is the flower and this hop contributes aromatic and bitter characteristics to the beer along with giving a stabilizing effect so this is a very important component of beer so this hop it also provides tannin substances which is responsible for bitterness and these tannins are responsible for the removal of protein because tannin combines with protein and tannin protein complexes are responsible for formation of insoluble flux and then this insoluble flux can be removed by filtration some pectin is also contributed by hops but and it may be involved in the formation of foam as well this is the beautiful of flower which is obtained from humulus lupulus plant so this is this has a very high breathing value and therefore most of the industries they import the in india they import this of flowers in the form or in the dried form next very important component is water so this addition of water so water it can be divided into two categories soft water and hard water so for the formation of for the making of beer of very hard quality that means hard in test bitter in test stringer in test there is use of water having high levels of carbonates so that gives a very heavy flavored dark colored product so it is responsible for the presence of harshness so water it matters and it decides the quality of beer another important component is yeast so there are different types of different strains of saccharomyces that can be used saccharomyces cerevisiae is the general one which is called as top fermenting yeast why it is called as top fermenting yeast because at the end of fermentation when the fermentation is over these yeast cells will start dying and they will gather at the top of the liquid of the fermentation broth so this aggregation is at the top it is called as flocculating yeast so therefore this yeast is called as top fermenting yeast some yeast have property to settle at the bottom it is called as bottom fermenting yeast so depending on its ability to float at the top or settle at the bottom at the end of fermentation these yeasts are called as top fermenting and bottom fermenting yeast then let us see the process of brewing so malt is the raw material now which is brought to brewing industry so for the making of this beer the fermentation medium is called as wort so this wort it is prepared in several stages several operations are required in order to prepare this specialized type of wort the adjins are first cooked they are gelatinized to gelatinize the starch and they are added to water so whatever the malt which is brought to brewing industry it is first milled so it is not milled very fine so that it will it is milled such that it will have a coarse malt particles so the first step in brewing is mashing mashing is defined as softening of mixture so whatever the complex materials which are present in malt are degraded so that it will be made available for the utilization by yeast so there are various types of enzymes which are present in malt and these 
enzymes from malt are allowed to act at different temperatures on different substrates like carbohydrates and proteins and of course after mashing the mash is filtered whatever the insoluble material is there that is the husk and insoluble protein material then uh, unutilized solid materials and boiled hop material the flour insoluble one are separated and whatever the liquid is there that liquid is used for fermentation process now let us understand the enzymatic degradation that happens during mashing process this is very important step amylolytic and proteolytic activity of malt follows a particular temperature regime therefore mashing involves exposure of this mash to different temperatures for different time periods that will allow degradation of protein and degradation of starch now the optimum temperature for the action of alpha and beta amylases are from 57 to 77 degree celsius that is the optimum temperature starch is degraded to amylose and amylo pectin starch is composed of amylose and amylopectin which are further degraded to dextrin maltose and glucose now see there are two types of amylases first one is beta amylase which is active at 57 to 65 degree celsius so this beta amylase is responsible for the cleavage of maltose units from the ends of linear glucose polymer as it is present in amylose whereas this alpha amylase the optimum temperature for its action is 70 to 75 degree celsius and it cleaves starch at random and this alpha amylase action it leads to the formation of dextrins so large chains are formed due to the action of amylase and maltoses are formed due to the action of beta amylase so if we want fermentable sugar like maltose to be formed in high concentration the temperature has to be maintained optimum for beta amylases and not for alpha amylase because alpha amylase is going to generate dextrins now mashing mashing is divided into two types infusion mashing or decoction mashing so what is this infusion mashing infusion mashing is again divided into upward and downward method remember that what is the purpose of mashing the purpose of mashing is degradation of starch to fermentable sugars and degradation of proteins to peptides so it is obtained through infusion mashing like upward and downward why the names are given upward and downward because here the temperature is increased from less to high here the temperature is brought down from high to low and that why the names terminologies are there upward method in this case the malt is mixed with water milled malt is mixed with water at a temperature of 40 to 50 degree celsius and it is permitted to rest for about 1 hour and that favors the action of proteolytic enzyme so during this 1 hour there will be proteolysis then the temperature is raised to 65 to 70 degree celsius along with the addition of malt adjuncts the mash is allowed to stand at this temperature for few minutes or this time period it can be standardized because this period is very important for the saccharification of starch this is the period during which the amylases are active and after that period the next step is to stop the 
biological activity of enzymes and that is achieved by raising the temperature to 75 degrees celsius so at 75 degrees celsius there will be destruction of enzymes and no further convergence will happen it is called as mashing off down or mashing it involves the initially the temperature of the mash water is 77 which is then mixed with milled malt so initially the temperature is higher then it is allowed to uh, rest at 70 degrees celsius for definite period of time for the action of malt amylases then the temperature is maintained from 65 to 70 degrees celsius as mentioned above then the temperature is brought down uh, similar to this so the only difference is upward involves raising the temperature downward method involves decreasing the temperature so the basic objective of infusion mashing is degradation of starch and protein second method is decoction mashing decoction means in marathi it is called as kadha so a portion of initial match is separated it is heated it is heated and boiled for a short period of time and then that heated portion is returned back to the mash main mash so that the temperature of this main mash will be raised or it will be uh, raised so this heated portion raises the temperature of entire mash and thereafter a new portion may be removed boiled and returned back to the main mash and this process is repeated several times so this is another method by which these temperature slots can be maintained for the degradation of starch and for the degradation of peptides so the peptones and peptides resulting from proteolytic activity of malt provides flavor foam and foam stabilization the dextrins being non fermentable provide low alcohol beer therefore if the action of uh, alpha amylase uh, amylases is more then it will lead to formation of dextrins and it will lead to the formation of low alcoholic beer so the manufacturer can decide that time temperature slot in order to get the desirable concentration of dextrin and desirable concentration of glucose and maltose because that decides the alcohol content of finished beer the control of ph during mashing is again very important so beta amylases and proteases are very active at ph 5 to 5.5 so the temp ph maintenance is again very important for extraction of certain compounds from malt and malt adjuncts during mashing process there is addition of uh, hops also so there will be extraction of hops tannins and several other essential aroma compounds into the uh, during the mashing process so this is dependent on the manufacturer some manufacturers may not add hops during this process they add hops during the next step that is wort boiling process so it is a general practice that during mashing process the hops are not added so mashing is targeted or it is focused only on degradation of starch and degradation of peptides second step is lautering lautering is separation of wort so whatever the result of mashing is there that uh, mash is filtered and it is separated from the insoluble material that insoluble material is paint grain and this paint grain is separated into a louter Done. this spent grain it contains husk and other grain residues along with presence of proteins and other solids so it is not discarded 
this paint grain it is used as animal feed so whatever the filtrate is obtained that filtrate is called as wort or it is also called as sweet wort next step after the separation of that wort is wort boiling or it is also called as kettle boil process kettle boil process is performed for two reasons the first reason is making it free from foreign microorganisms the temperature is raised to boiling along with agitation for 1.5 to 2.5 hours during wort boiling process the hops are added the flowers are added and the reason for that is it facilitates the extraction of resins tannins essential oils and bitter acids which are responsible for the development of flavor in finished beer boiling is also important in order to form the caramel caramel means burnt sugar some amount of sugar it will be converted into burnt sugar that is called as caramel so for caramelization also this process is very important so if the manufacturer has decided to produce dark color beer then the time of boiling it can be raised so that there will be formation of more and more burn, burnt sugar that will contribute to the color <coughs> so this coagulation of residual and partially hydrolyzed protein that causes the turbidity so there will be formation of this uh, what we can say the uh, hot break we can call it as the hot break or we can call it as the hop back hop back means the remains of hop so which are of course separated by filtration so the essential changes that occurs during this kettle boil process are inactivation of enzymes formation of insoluble protein tannin complexes coagulation of proteins caramelization and sterilization of wort so these insoluble materials are separated by filtration now this wort is ready for fermentation the tannins which are which helps in coagulation of unwanted proteins helps during this wort boiling process tannins are negatively charged organic compounds and they react with positively charged proteins and they are responsible for formation of complexes the insoluble complexes it helps in the foam formation and in the development of characteristic bitter flavor or aroma of beer but if the concentration of these protein tannin complexes are more in finished beer then it also causes the turbidity therefore proper concentration is very important for imparting bitter flavor and aroma of beer at the end of boiling there is formation of insoluble complexes which is called as hot break or it is also called as hop back so you need to remember these terminologies so hot break or hot back these are the insoluble impurities which are formed during kettle boil process which should be removed by filtration then the next step is whirl pulling whirl pulling means the mixing of the wort contains so after boiling many solids may be present that are removed by whirl pulling process so the objective of this process mixing process is to separate the any insoluble materials which may be present in wort so during whirl pulling the solid materials tend to clump together at the center of the vortex so there is formation of vortex at the center and then this liquid is forced outside the vessel so this is one of the method 
for the separation of solid particle so solid particles when they come together it is called as trub which is remove then the next step is pitching pitching as we have discussed earlier it is the inoculation by yeast so inoculum development it is a separate program for this during this breeding process so inoculum development program is separate in which the stock yeast culture is added to malt extract broth then it is aerated so the process of inoculum development of yeast it is aerobic it is carried out under aerobic conditions whereas alcohol formation or the fermentation of beer it is a anaerobic process so after the aerated wort the wort is aerated which is obtained from this uh, above mentioned processing and then it is cooled the temperature is brought down so that it will be favorable for the growth of inoculated yeast after inoculation the fermentation will be halted for first 24 hours because that wort is aerated and it will contain dissolved oxygen concentration so initially yeast cells will utilize this dissolved oxygen and it will multiply by budding once this oxygen is exhausted the yeast cells will get will divert its metabolism towards energy metabolism towards formation of alcohol so during formation of alcohol there will be formation of co2 and due to which there will be formation of foam as well so as the ethanol formation starts it is indicated manifested by the presence of rising foam to the surface so this carbon dioxide evaluation it increases at the as the fermentation or the production of ethanol it proceeds by 40 to 60 hours after inoculation the surface foam layer becomes very thick and can measured up can be measured up to 12 inches in depth so by this time the conditions are totally anaerobic by the fifth day of fermentation there is no longer carbon dioxide evaluation so this indicates evaluation of co2 it indicates that the fermentation has stopped so at the end of in general 7 to 9 days so generally it is 5 to 6 days but some books have described it is dependent on the variety of yeast 7 to 9 days the last phase of fermentation yeast becomes inactive and it will flocculate either at the top or it will settle at the bottom it is called as yeast break which is an insoluble material which will be formed in the fermentation medium so this is how this beer which is formed here it will be then separated from this insoluble yeast so next step is cold storage maturation so this broth is filtered and then this filtered broth fermented broth is transferred to cellars which are called as storage tanks which are kept at low temperature they are also called as refrigerated cellars that means the temperature of storage is 0 to 3 degree celsius this process is also called as fasting process and this process takes place about for a period of 2 to several 2 weeks to several months during this fasting process storage at low temperature the coagulated nitrogenous substances like resins insoluble phosphates and yeast cells will sediment from the beer so that it is possible to separate that clarified beer from these insoluble impurities then some of the during the transfer process into the cellar some of the oxygen is absorbed 
and some of the alcohol gets converted to ester so esters are formed which is having the sweet taste and the beer matures so that it loses its harshness during this process there is addition of certain reagents like chill proofing agents this is very important chill proofing agents means the removal of in unstable residual proteins by precipitation or adsorption chill proofing is done by the use of proteolytic enzymes to reduce the molecular size of residual proteins now let me tell you what is this chill proofing means during storage at low temperature sometimes it happens that proteins tannins they may get combined and they may form turbidity flocks in the finished beer so the beer turns turbid so in order to avoid that this chill proofing agents are used are proteolytic enzymes which are active at low temperature so what is the job of these proteolytic enzymes they will degrade the large protein complexes and it will avoid the formation of flocks so degradation of large flocks protein complexes is will be the function of proteolytic enzymes so proteolytic enzymes prevent the formation of flocks and therefore proteolytic enzymes are called as at low temperature they are working therefore they are called as chill proofing agents along with that there is use of antioxidants which avoids the oxidation of ethanol to acids because oxidation will convert this ethanol to acids like lactic acid acetic acid etc and that affects the flavor next step is finishing or carbonation the final step carbonation involves induction of clean carbon dioxide so co2 is present there in beer finished beer but still additional amount of co2 is sparged inside the liquid beer then this addition of co2 which is the most common practice provides final dissolved co2 content to up to 0.5% now this co2 the role of co2 is very important here it has a dual role first thing is that co2 is responsible for the flavor of beer second thing is that co2 is responsible for stabilization of beer because because co2 it replaces oxygen and therefore it acts as a preservative agent for beer and the final step is packaging so filtration of beer is frequently done through diatomaceous or filter it is packed in a uh, pasteurized bottles cans and barrels and this beer uh, it is allowed to pass through several biological filters also